Recently, some evolution scientists have backed off the assertion that Ambulocetus was an ancestor of modern whales because its eyes are high up on the head, like an alligator's eyes, quite dissimilar from whales and land mammals. Ambulocetus may be on a slight sideline, and we think that mostly because it's very strange. It has its eyes raised up on top of its head in a very strange way, and it's unusually large for an early whale but mostly the eyes up on the top of the head seems like an unusual specialization. Maybe it's not on the main line. Evolution scientists claim the most spectacular intermediate fossil in whale evolution is Rhodocetus, an animal with four legs, a whale's tail called a fluke, and flippers. It would swim using its widened tail fluke like a modern whale, but it had four legs like a land mammal a perfect transitional fossil between land mammals and aquatic mammals, just as Darwin's videos are nothing more than hopeful supposition. If museum diagrams are redrawn and corrected for various discrepancies, opponents argue that whale evolution is non-existent. I was surprised that uh, the skull wasn't more complete. I thought you had this full, because I've always seen the models in the museums yeah. of the full skull. Did, how did you figure out the, what the shape of the skull? Uh, was it based on these bones, or did you have other fossils to go from? So the shape of the skull is uh, based on the fossils that we have. And so we have the parts that have the eye and the brain case and the back of the snout. We don't have the tip of the snout which is unfortunate because we don't know where the nasal opening was, therefore. However, we did find the whole lower jaw, so we do know how long that snout was. We don't have a sense for its exact shape. So that's based on uh, related animals. Those related animals all have the nasal opening way in the front, so those related animals would be Cuchicetus and Pachycetus. Those have their nasal opening way in the front, so it's likely that Amulocetus had that too, but we don't know that. Darwin suggested that the survival of the fittest, or natural selection, was another mechanism for evolution. He thought that nature would favor the strongest varieties within any species, and the weakest would eventually die off. The surviving varieties would improve over time, and eventually evolve into a completely new species. Some scientists argue that natural selection does not have the power or capacity to theoretically cause evolution. They contend that this process can only select or remove traits for a species, but not create new body parts. To better understand their argument against natural selection, one has to go no further than an animal breeder, who uses the process called artificial selection. Artificial selection mimics natural selection, but instead of nature making the reproductive choices, a breeder makes the decisions, consciously. In both processes, there is a limit to how much can be accomplished by breeding. For instance, dogs have a limited number of genes or variations coded in its DNA, such as color, shape, or size. Using artificial selection, a breeder cannot go beyond these limits. Breeders have created a four inch tall Chihuahua and a three and a half foot tall Great Dane, but they cannot produce a 10 foot tall dog or a one inch dog. Breeders can select for dogs with short hair or long hair, but they cannot produce a dog with feathers. 
Natural selection and artificial selection can only promote characteristics that are already present in an animal's gene pool, but cannot add completely new genes or body parts to any animal species. The scientists who support evolution have recognized this limitation of natural selection. Now there is a new theory of evolution to explain how animals could theoretically develop new body parts, such as wings or eyes or feathers. The new theory of evolution called Neo-Darwinian evolution suggests that animals did not evolve by effort, need or as a direct response to the environment as Darwin thought. Rather, mutations in the genes of the reproductive cells would cause one animal to slowly change over time into another. This new theory of evolution suggests that a carnivorous land mammal became a whale by accidental mutations. In trying to understand the evolution of whales and dolphins from four-legged terrestrial carnivores, the first thing you have to keep in mind is that chance plays a, a tremendous role in this. Scientists who oppose evolution suggest that changing one animal into another by accidental mutations is preposterous. If a carnivorous land mammal such as a hyena, evolved into a whale, too many body transitions would have to occur by chance. The hyena's front legs would have to change into pectoral fins. Its back legs would have to disappear. Its nostrils would have to move to the top of its head and form a blowhole. The hyena would have to develop a dorsal fin by accident. Its bony tail would have to change into a cartilaginous fluke. The hyena's hair would have to nearly disappear and be replaced by blubber. Its body would have to increase to 80,000 pounds and its external ears would have to disappear and change for high pressure diving. Each of these new traits would require at least one new structural protein. Each protein would in turn necessitate adding 300 letters of DNA to the genetic blueprint in the proper sequence. This would be equivalent to a blindfolded toddler typing several pages of meaningful paragraphs into a completed book, or to a person throwing a die thousands of times in a row, and each time it came up as three. Given these improbable odds of evolution occurring through accidental mutations, some scientists are now questioning the theory of evolution.